Hello everyone and welcome to .NET Core Central. In today's video, I'm going to discuss nullable reference type. Nullable reference types is something released with C Sharp 8. In this video, I'm going to cover three things. Number one is what is nullable and non-nullable reference type. Number two, how to configure a C Sharp project or a file to use this feature. And number three is going to be a code example on nullable reference type. So let's start with number one. What is nullable and non-nullable reference type? Now nullable reference type is something which all of us are familiar with. Pre-C Sharp 8, every time we declare a reference type, we can assign it to null. So it is a nullable reference type. Any reference type which can have a null value is a nullable reference type. Whereas non-nullable reference type is something which is introduced new in C Sharp 8. Essentially, it means that we can have a reference type and that cannot be set as null. By cannot be set as null, I mean, I mean we can set it as null, but we are going to get a compiler warning. And this can be done through two different form. One is through changing the project property, and another one is through using a directive in the file. Now, as I mentioned, non-nullable reference type is something new introduced in C Sharp 8. Now, when we use this feature, what happens is if we declare a project to have the nullable feature enabled, and after that, if we go ahead and declare a type and assign a null to it, or just leave a property or variable of this type, which are also reference type as empty, then we are going to get a compiler warning. Though we are never going to get an error, be it compile time or runtime, but we are going to get a warning telling that the intent of the class was supposed to be non-nullable, whereas we are assigning it to a null. And when I get into an example, you can see that. So the main purpose of non-nullable reference type, what I understand, is essentially expressing an intent. Or it's more like a design idea or design concept which expresses the intent of the author of the code. So when we declare a type or a project which is nothing but a component as non-nullable, we are essentially expressing our intent that any types or any reference types declared inside of this component or class are non-nullable. Now, if we want to use any of this type as nullable, just like value types where we have nullable value types where we can declare the type with a question mark, then it can be null. For example, we can do an integer int question mark. Once we declare an integer value with int question mark, it becomes a nullable value type. So when we declare a class or a project with the nullable feature, we're essentially saying that any reference type inside of this class file or inside of this project are non-nullable. At that point in time, anyone accessing this class or this project, which is a component from outside, and they want to use it as a nullable instead, they have to declare it with question mark. Now, once I get into the project example, it will become much more clearer. So first, let's start with creating a .NET Core project. Again, this feature is released with C Sharp 8, which means it is available by default with .NET Core 3.0. So I'm going to create a console application in .NET Core 3.0. And inside of that, first I'm going to show how we can declare this feature at a project level. And then I'm going to define a couple of classes and show it how we can do it at a file level also. So let's start with a new project. Now that the project is created, let's uh, show you two different ways. So first thing is at the project property level. So here we can come and we can add a tag. So 
So we can say nullable as enable and once we do that the nullable feature will be enabled across the project. So I'm not going to do that right now. I just want to show, I just want to first create a couple of files and then do it without nullable and then convert it to nullable and show how what is the difference. So let's create a class and let's call it nullable type. Actually, let's make it as non-nullable type. That's what it is. And let's declare a property inside it. So I declare a property called non-nullable property inside of it. Let's create another class and name it as uh, test non nullable let's say it has one function inside this class is test and then what it is doing is uh, it is going to declare non-nullable type equal to null. Okay. So here we just get a squiggly which says uh, this variable is assigned but never used, which is okay. Now if we compile this function yeah, the only thing we see is you know it's assigned and never and never used. So let's let's use it. So we can do console dot right line, and inside that we can do non nullable type dot non nullable property. So if we do that, we will get this exception will not even show up. Yeah, and we're all good, right? So this is kind of an expected behavior for us so far, pre C sharp 8, and we're used to this. Obviously in this kind of scenario, we use things like this so that if it is null, don't execute, else execute, and things like that. But we don't have to do any of this right now. Now let's go ahead and, uh, now let's get into this project and enable the nullable feature. So once we do that, see we are getting warnings already. It says converting non-literal or possible null value to non-nullable type. It's essentially saying that we have declared this type as non-nullable whereas we are trying to assign it null. And this one is saying you're trying to dereference a possible null reference value. So as you can see, and, and if we go here, we should see the same thing for nullable property because it doesn't have any value and default value for string is null so it's saying that you know it's not initialized now if we do is if we do that then this will essentially go away uh, because now we have a default value which is not null but let me remove that and okay so at this point in time we can see that it is back to it is back to the original uh, warning and if we compile we should see three warning messages here so as you can see we are getting three warning message but this this is not going to prevent us from running this application. We can still run it and we can still see 
you know, there's nothing to see because I have not even initialized this. Uh, thank God I'm not going to get any null reference exception. But the point is, you know, it works. It just prints the hello world, which is in the program.cs, and then it closes the application. So nothing really happens. But the point of this is not stopping the application from running. It's more about the intent. It's basically telling the caller function at compile time itself that you're making a mistake. As I mentioned earlier that if we want to use a non-nullable type and make it as nullable, all we have to do is this. So once we do this, you can see that this rest quickly goes away. And of course, same thing with this one. We can just do this. This will get rid of this one. But this is as we do today. It's not a big deal. But this is where the difference is. And you, you can see th the syntax is exactly same as nullable value types. You declare the type, and then you give a question mark, and it makes it nullable in a non-nullable environment. But this one will still be an error because unless you make this a nullable string, in which case the error goes away. So this is the nullable feature and I have shown it so far through the project property. Let me make a small change and show you how we can use directive for the same. So if I get rid of this, we are back to our original implementation. Now at this point, see it's gone. If we build, we should not get any warning, which is expected. Now if we want to make this class only as non-nullable and keep everything else as is, we can do it through the nullable directive. So we can do this and then we can say enable so as soon as we do that, we can see this feature is enabled for this particular type. And we are seeing that, you know, this reference type cannot be, this property cannot be null. And then we can go here and we can do the same thing. And this will start showing the same error as before and at this point in this at this point if we build this program we should see the old three warning messages as before so that's all i wanted to cover today i can see the value of using it essentially so there would be some scenarios where we want to make sure that our objects are not nullable well there are a lot of advantage with non nullable reference type right because during, especially during this uh, dereferencing, we don't have to worry about null check and things like that. So our code will eventually become faster. It is not going to prevent us from still making things null because it's just a warning, but I think it is a big enough change and it's a pretty good intent for, especially for components which are used across applications or NuGet packages to use this feature which will ensure that the caller knows the intent of the designer of the component. So, so that's all I wanted to cover today. If you have any questions or queries about this feature, let me know, I'll answer those. And if you have some other experience or something to add, please provide a comment below so that you know everybody can help from your experience with nullable and non-nullable reference types. If you have not subscribed to my channel, please subscribe it. And if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Thank you so much for watching. See you next week.